next, our speaker is uh, uh, Dr. Brooke Wilmson. Dr. Wilmson is um, uh, the lecturer, senior lecturer at the uh, at the School of uh, uh, Development Studies in the School of Humanities and Social Sciences at Globe University, Australia. She's the director of the Master in International Development and convener of the major in sustainability and, sustain and development. Uh, she has been mainly working in China, but is quite also involved in research in West Africa, Southeast Asia, and Australia. Um, Dr. Brooke, can you take the floor? Yeah. Thank you for, for that, Professor Emma. Um, first, I want to say congratulations to, um, to Professor Emma and to APSA for this wonderful conference. Um, and I want to congratulate Dr. Ravagos, De Fiesta, Dr. C, and Madam Wipon Thama on their wonderful presentations and their deep commitment to the collection and analysis of rich empirical data. So these studies, I think, can offer important new information to inform preparation, adaptation, and transformation in relation to climate change. And um, I really appreciate that um, Professor Borio's team are really focused on these three tr tranches of response to climate change. So um, in listening to, to the speakers, I was, uh, very much uh, thinking about my understanding of climate change um, from my experiences in doing research in agricultural adaptation in China, um, looking at social responses in West Africa, and also um, in my time working with uh, Dr. C on his work in Iloilo. Um, I was struck by how Dr. Ravagos study um, looked at the formal and informal um, households and how um, she has demonstrated how we can't approach climate change research in a silo, nor consider it a new and burgeoning area for researchers. So there's a long history of disaster and poverty alleviation studies around the world, particularly in the Philippines. And climate change research really sits at the confluence of all these past studies. So there are multiple entangled drivers, impacts and responses that we need to consider when talking about vulnerability to climate change. And these cannot be identified as purely a result of um, or a response to something that is particularly just climate change. So we need to build on all this past work and learn from it and engage with it. Um, Dr. Fiesta, De Fiesta's fabulous study of social vulnerability and um, analyze it, uh, highlights the entangled attributes that contribute to social vulnerability. And when I was listening to Dr. Fiesta speak, I was wondering about how social vulnerability is produced. What are the historical, political and institution, institutional drivers of all of these characteristics of social vulnerability? Does dependency, for example, which was one of the um, attributes that um, Dr. De Fiesta's study looked at, does it have deep historical roots in colonialism in the Philippines? And are, they re are these, uh, these vulnerabilities then reproduced through contemporary political and institutional inequalities and biases? And finally, Dr. C's work that I'm very, ah, oh, sorry, before I get to, uh, we'll go to Dr. C's work now. Um, he highlights the highly political nature of climate change adaptation. And he gives us the hopeful example of the Homeless People's Federation of the Philippines. And we can see um, here how, with, how this organization created spaces for political capability through voice, participation and empowerment um, through which people engaged with the resettlement. And it made me wonder how people can work with the, poli politi the political and climate change rather than against it or to self-determine their climate futures. And this is something that I know Dr. C is very passionate about looking at the politics of climate adaptation. And finally, I get to Madam Wipon Thama's description of the lived experience of climate change. And I think this is something that is so missing in um, international forums like this. And so um, I congratulate Professor Porio, um, Madam Wipon Thama and the Climate Watch Thailand for bringing uh, this important voice to the fore in a meeting like this. And she spoke about how the rhythm of life has already been interrupted and this has flow on effects into her private sphere. 
Madden Thama's reflections on the Thai minister at COP26 highlights how local level understanding and knowledge is missing as important sources of expertise. And there is a lack of engagement between the upper echelons of politics among people who make the decisions that have significant impacts on the ground. Um, Thama must live the, the impacts of decisions made at Glasgow but is disregarded as a source of knowledge and dismissed as unaware of the impacts. Here we see Madame Farmer's extraordinary attempts to adapt every day. So once again, I congratulate Madame Farmer for her willingness to share her deep knowledge and expertise in this international forum. Thank you.